I have a special guest that I brought today with me. So I want you to make him welcome. He's an author of some really famous books. In fact, one of his books has 66 books contained within one book. It's outsold any other book ever written. He's written songs on the hearts of men for endless of time. And he's here today. So let's welcome Jesus. Welcome Jesus. Welcome him. I'm telling you, if Donald Trump walked in that back door right now, you wouldn't be sitting. Let's raise up our land. Let's lift up our voices. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. I don't normally walk around barefoot on this stage, but you know what? Yesterday, as we worshiped, parents said, you know what? We're standing out of holy. So I want to encourage you today to kick your shoes off. Walk on the holy ground. As we prayed on Wednesday night, the word of the Lord came and said, focus, focus, keep your eyes on me, not on your circumstances, not what's going on in the world, but keep your eyes on me. Just like Peter, he's calling some of you today out of the boat. <laughs> Oh, you've been in the boat too long. There was one. One. Brave enough to keep his eyes focused on the Lord. There was one. Oh. So they said, who do you say I am? You are the Christ. The Son of God. The living God. The one that brings forth living God. Oh, that was revealed unto you by my Father. Hot trust because of that. I will build a church. And I'll build that church on your knowledge. Because Jesus is our answer. And he's in the house today. I couldn't sleep last night. Oh, the Holy Spirit was rolling. He was moving on my heart. He loves this town. He loves this church. He reminded me of Matthew 25 and Luke 19. The stories are similar. And it's about... Three men that received talents from the master. One received five talents. One received two talents. And one received one talent. But they all received a talent. When the master went away and came back. What is it that you did with the talent which I gave you? <laughs> oh master. I took that five talents and I made you five more. Oh, well done. Well done. Come. Come. What I gave you was little, but I'm going to give you more. And sir, what did you do with the two talents that I gave you? Well, master, I immediately took those two talents. I put them to work for you, Master. And today I'm proud to stand here and say that I have four talents to give back up to you. Oh, well done. Well done. Come. Come into my house. I have more for you. I have much more to give you. Oh, and you, sir? Oh, I knew you were a bad master. I knew you hung on to things that weren't yours. I 
buried her. I buried my feelings. I buried what you gave me. I didn't share with anyone. But I have your talents. Oh, you wicked man, God said. You wicked man. You slothful, lazy person. If you knew that I expected you to multiply that which I gave you, what did you do bury? Depart from me. I ask you today, we all have a talent. What are you doing with it? Are you sharing the gospel? I won't ask you to raise your hands, but how many people really honestly can say, I mean, I've got a list in the back of my Bible of all the people that I've brought to Christ that I know that I've led to Christ. There's lots of people that we lead to Christ that we don't know because we plant seed. But are you planting seed? Are you watering seed? Or are you burying your talent? Are you burying what God gave you, even though it might only be one talent? Because I don't want to get up there and have him say, depart from me. Depart from me, you wicked, evil person. I sent my son to die for you. I sent him to the cross that you might have life. And you did nothing. You did nothing. You spit on him. You beat him. You did nothing. So today as we worship, I ask that you give him something. Give him your all. As the word was, keep your focus on him today. It has been a long time with the devil coming up against this church. He's done it for years. But lately in the last couple of months, he's, he's made this music like, hey, there's no piano player, there's no worship leader, there's nothing. He wants us to quit. But I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. We're going to sing to a CD today with other people's voices, and that's all right. Amen. It doesn't matter. These altars are open. Come, fill them, and don't leave without your answer. There's diabetes in the house like crazy, the Lord says. And I know of a couple of cases, but the Lord says it's all over this house. It can be left right here today. Don't leave until you get the answer. When we worship today, whether it's just the music playing to the tracks, keep your eyes focused on Him. He's here to heal. He's here to deliver. You're depressed. You're down today. Oh, come to the altar. Let us anoint you. Let us fill you with the Holy Ghost. It's your day. It's your decision. He already paid the price. He's not going back to the cross. He's not going to take one more step or one more strike upon his back. The healing is complete. He said to Talus, die. It is finished. I have done my work. And I will deliver my blood to the seed of the Heavenly Father to the mercy seat. And it is finished. So your healing is here today. Your salvation is here today. Your happiness, your peace, your deliverance, it's here today. It's your choice. What are you going to do with God and what God gave you?
of his words to you before this church.
guys come on and share with the Lord tonight. depressed 
and confused. But God says he is here today to deliver you from all your past baggage. But are you ready to set it free? I have a word that goes in with what she was just saying. The Lord was saying, as in the natural, as in the natural, when you are rebuilding, when you're building a new structure, the foundation, the traditions, the walls that were there have got to go for the new building. And just as God is bringing change and restoration and rebuilding here, there's going to have to be a breaking down of those, a breaking through by God. Because this house that he wants to build here is going to be built on the praise and the worship and the glorification of God. Then he will come down and show us his glory. He will bless us beyond our wildest expectations. He will strengthen us and he will be honored in this new house new house that he wants to build. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Confirmation. Amen. Purvis, can we have track four given one minute? The Lord's given us a word. It's our choice. It's really your choice. He's not going to force you. He says he draws all men unto him by his Holy Spirit. You're either drawn this morning or you're not. But let me tell you, if you're not drawn, you've got to be checking your spirit. So we're going to go back. As the word said, the wall's got to come down. So we're going to go back to we fall down. Because that's where it starts. The wall's in us. We have to fall down on our face before the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to take our pride off for all intents and purposes of what we call a crown. What you think you are. And we've got to lay it at the feet of Jesus. Because we're nothing without Him. We can do nothing without Him. It is all about Him and Him alone. It is His will. It is His purpose. It is His call. And it's our job if He doesn't do one more thing for us to lay our crown down, to lay our pride down. As he did as a man, he laid everything aside for you. Everything. Can you imagine having the power to be able to call legions of angels? I don't let someone pass by me hardly and say a bad word about me without me having something to say. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. Because we rise up. Who am I? You can't talk to me. But the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords laid it all down. Oh, prove yourself. Come on off that cross. Prove yourself. He did. He proved himself. He proved himself that he loved us so he laid his life. He not only died once, but he died twice. When sin entered the world, the Bible says that you will surely die. And Satan comes along and says, Oh, you won't die. You're just going to have the same knowledge. As the Father. You won't die. Ha! Did you see what happened when you bit into that fruit? You didn't die. See? Oh, there's another death. 
There's a spiritual death. Separation from the Father took place that day. And life began for them. And then they also had a physical death. For us, we have the same two deaths. We were born separated from the Father. He brought us life. And oh yes, we will have a physical body death. But to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. But see, Jesus, he didn't get that opportunity. He had to give up of his own spirit and die physically. And then take sin, which was not his, it was mine. And he got separated from the Father. He got separated from the Father. Even though he was sinless. Because he made man who knew no sin to be sin. That we might have life. So I don't want to beg you, but I'm telling you, we're going to sing one more time. I believe the word of the Lord is to give it up today. To lay it all down. To keep your eyes focused on Him. The percentage of the fact that all of us will ever be together, together, together is probably highly unlikely. That every person in this room would be back in this room. It probably would never, ever happen again. But we're here for an appointed time. So if you're physically able, Stand. If you're not, kneel. But give it to Jesus today. <coughs> we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus.
Good morning. Good morning.